Hello, my name's Mark. Welcome to RC Hacker. Now this video today is a follow-up to my open LRS range testing that I did earlier. If you want to see that video, click up here. Now, a lot of people commented and said that the antennas that I was using, these little ones, are a pile of crap and they're not worth, you know, you can do a lot better than them. Better than them. Now these are the ones that come with the Hobby King one and of course, you know, you get what you pay for. You get a crap antenna with Hobby King. Just have a look inside them. You can easily pull the end off there. What you've got is this is what's called a normal mode helical antenna. It's not your helical directional helical, it's still a dipole. And basically, this coil allows the antenna to be more compact. So, even though it is supposed to be 433 megahertz, it's a very short antenna. So, what, I'm, what the plan is, I want to replace this with a half wave whip antenna just basically a piece of wire that's about half the length of the wavelength and on the airframe I'm going to use an inverted V antenna um, instructions for that are found on RC groups and the FPV labs by IB Crazy and they've been quite popular with a lot of the FPV guys so they're supposed to be pretty easy to build so let's go Okay, so let's quickly go over the mathematics on calculating actual wavelength. So we've got, that's our wavelength equals speed of light on our frequency, okay? Which equals, the speed of light is 298 by 10 to the 6 divided by our frequency, which is 433 megahertz, um, to make it mega again multiply by 10 to the 6. Now because we're calculating for a half wavelength we stick a half in there and also I'm going to put in a what's called a velocity factor of 0 0.95 um, that's just to account for the change of the uh, speed of speed of light in metal or the change of the speed of uh, electricity basically so that that's just a factor that we've thrown in there and if we do the maths for that what, what we can do we can cancel out those two there so all we need to do is is uh, can we see that there 298 divided by 433 because that divided by 2 that and multiply by 0.95 so we get 0 0.327 which equals that's 320 whoops that's 327 millimeters now that figure there is you know it may or may not be correct because there's many other factors which I haven't accounted for like you know, I don't know. It's the the material that you're making the antenna out of. There's all sorts of sorts of things that can affect it. So to effectively tune this antenna, what we're going to do, I'm going to start with an antenna that's slightly longer. Let's just say, if we graph it like this, this you have to get a bit practical. So just just say we start off with something like 350 millimeters here, and then we measure the our signal strength so we plug it into our plug it all in power it up and somehow we need to measure our signal strength now the, because these are open source I should be able to output the signal strength on a serial port or something like that so what we do measure the signal strength perhaps you might get something like this a signal strength up here and then you cut a bit off so say so cut five millimeters off and keep cutting and measuring cutting and measuring cutting and measuring now what you might end up with is some sort of curve like this now hopefully so cut and measure cut and measure your antenna keeping everything the same so everything's got to be the same like when you take your measurements make sure your body's in the same position you know your antenna doesn't move etc 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 it's all got to be the same and then 
hopefully this value here should be somewhere around our 327 millimeters and you know once you know this this distance that's what your new antenna should be so put a new bit of wire on cut it to exactly that that this that that distance and you're done and you'll have a tuned antenna um, as to where you measure it from exactly uh, if you've basically if you've got your coax with your coax shielding and then the point where the actual wire comes out that's your inner part and then your wire is soldered on there as we saw earlier as we'll see um, yeah it should be should measure it from there technically but in practice if you're doing a graph like this you can measure it from anywhere okay but if you want to match it up and see how it compares with the theory of it you should me measure it from where the coax shielding is comes away from the center of the coax so yeah let's go and let's try and build this thing okay so this is an antenna that I pulled apart previously what you've got here this is the base which normally connects onto your receiver like so just screws on you can see the center pin there and then when you pull this one apart once you've done that once that's pulled apart it's broken see in the middle there on the left hand side there's a there's uh, the inner part of the coax and that is soldered to this part here so and it looks quite fiddly to actually assemble it looks like you've you know you've got to slide this part back a bit solder the center bit and then and then solder the outer shield of the coax to this outer part now I'm going to pull all that apart and try and put a, another piece of coax in maybe it may be a bit I'll put some other coax it's a bit, a bit thicker so hopefully I can fit that in and then what I'll do normally where this is the original part that was soldered to the, the center of the coax there I'm going to use some of this wire and use a half wave wavelength and solder that there and then fix that onto the antenna so I'll still be able to pivot it around there's going to be a weak point here so I'm going to do a bit of work sorting that out okay so scratch that idea rather than um, trying to put all this back together it's really just a bit too fiddly I'm just going to use this one and um, take this wire off and the heat shrink and solder my half wave whip directly onto there okay one thing worth noting um, I don't know what this material is but it takes the solder really well but one, one thing worth noting is if you if you look here as I bend that you can see that goes in and out a little bit now once I solder that to the coax there it's going to be you can see that center part of the coax is very fragile so I'm, I've got a number of different sizes of heat shrink so I'm just going to build it up around that to hopefully give it plenty of strength okay so I've, I've made my solder joint here on the end of the the center part of the coax um, this point here is going to be the weakest point and because of that movement because because when you when you bend bend the antenna at the base this this will move up and down a bit I want to strengthen this up as much as possible so I've got a this is a bamboo skewer what I'm going to do I'm going to, I'm going to slice it make a few strips of bamboo skewer like that and then put them around the outside of it and then um, put heat shrink around that first I was thinking I'll, I'll put some heat shrink over it first and then do my bamboo skewer around the end around the outside of it and then then put a bigger piece of um, heat shrink around the whole lot and that'll still allow it to move in and out as you bend the antenna so let's go let's do that I've got my little I've got my pieces of bamboo here I just stuck them down in there a bigger piece of heat shrink and the that join has been heat shrinked as well and I've just got to distribute these pieces of bamboo around the outside and then um, shrink that on I'm gonna do this off camera because it's actually really fiddly to do with a camera in front of me like this
There we go, managed it on camera, so there we go. Ooh, that's still quite hot, but now I'm hoping if we Let's look at that there, we bend this now. There we go, that moves in and out, so there's no strain on that solder joint at all. And we've got the whip going out there. So now all we need to do is um, might even take this, this will still fit over the top, just um, drill a little hole in the end of that. So there we go, we've got our half wave whip. Now I actually made this a bit longer than my calculation because I'm going to, um, as I said before, I'm going to cut it down and tune this. But um, I've now got my new antenna that I can screw onto my radio, like so, and then, yep, I can move it around and I can orientate it. No worries, full free correct movement. One last thing I should do, just to make sure that I haven't muffed anything up, is um, basically test this for continuity. So I've just got the multimeter on continuity mode, and I'll put one end on our antenna, one on our center pin. Yep, we're working there, and I'll put one on the outside as well. Make sure I can get that. Yeah, that's connected to the outside, and yeah, no continuity there, so there's no shorts. All good, done. Okay, so there you go, a pretty quick and dirty half wave whip antenna for the Open LRS system. You'll see here as well, I've got another antenna, that's my uh, 2.4 gigahertz system. Now, I don't run these both at the same time, so when I'm using the Open LRS, this is powered off, and likewise, so they shouldn't interfere with each other too much, it's particularly if I am angle them away like this, I shouldn't have too much problems with the interference there. If I have the antennas parallel like this, then yeah, having that extra bit of metal there will probably interfere with the other one, but even then, it shouldn't make a huge amount of difference. Worth noting as well that you don't want to touch this antenna while you're using it. That will affect your um, performance a huge amount. And I'm going to tune this. So I'm going to cut it down, record the RSSI values, and then figure out what the optimum length is, and then rebuild that. So that'll be later on too, perhaps. And I talked about the V antenna that I'm going to build for the um, airframe. I'll leave that for another video too. So cheers. Thanks for watching.